The Power of Your Subconscious Mind is a book by Joseph Murphy, an American self-help author, titled The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. It explores how people's subconscious mind affects our lives and offers ways to harness the power of the subconscious mind to improve your life. It is considered one of the most important self-help books, has been translated into many languages, and has sold millions of copies worldwide. Joseph Murphy was born in 1898 in Cork County, Ireland, and grew up in a Jesuit seminary preparing for the priesthood. At the age of 18 or 19, he began to question the traditional Catholic dogma of the Jesuits and decided he wanted to experience life, so he left traditional, closed Ireland for the United States. At first, he worked odd jobs everywhere, but later became a qualified pharmacist through half-time work and half-time study. After the outbreak of World War II, he served in a medical unit in the military, during which time he rekindled his interest in religion and read extensively in various religious texts. After the war, he traveled around the world and took classes at various universities, exploring the mysteries of religion and thought. After returning to the United States, Murphy aspired to become a clergyman, but because his ideas were at odds with most Christian churches, he founded his own church in Los Angeles, and soon his congregation grew, and eventually other churches joined him in founding the Christian Science Society. As more and more people came to hear him preach, even rented auditoriums were still full, and he began to preach on radio programs and record his talks on cassette tapes to spread his ideas far and wide. He became a world-renowned authority on mysticism, psychokinesis, and the New Thought movement. Murphy, who died in December 1981, wrote 30 books in his lifetime, including The Power of the Subconscious, published in 1963 which is best known and has been widely read around the world as one of the classics of subliminal development books. In The Power of the Subconscious, Mr. Murphy argues that our subconscious mind is the guiding force behind our thoughts and behaviors, influencing our thoughts, beliefs, values, and actions. He believes that if we can become aware of and learn to harness the power of the subconscious mind, we can change our lives and achieve our dreams and goals. In the book, Murphy offers a number of ways to harness the power of the subconscious mind. For example, he emphasizes the importance of positive thinking, that is, believing that you can succeed and focusing your attention on the positive. He also provides exercises and techniques, such as self-suggestion, hypnosis, positive visualization, and deep relaxation, to help readers master the power of the subconscious mind and improve their lives. In addition, Murphy talks about how the subconscious mind affects our bodies and our health. He believes that the subconscious mind can influence the body's ability to heal itself, and offers ways to harness the power of the subconscious mind to improve health and heal disease. Murphy also mentions in his book how the subconscious mind can affect our financial status and business success. He points out that if we have negative beliefs and thoughts, such as I can't be rich or I don't deserve success, then our subconscious mind can prevent us from achieving financial freedom and business success. Therefore, he offers ways to change these negative beliefs and thoughts, and encourages readers to learn to think positively and believe in their ability to achieve success and wealth. In addition, Murphy emphasizes the impact of the subconscious mind on our relationships and well-being. He points out that if we have negative beliefs and thoughts, such as, I don't deserve love or life is meaningless, then our subconscious mind can prevent us from achieving happiness and fulfillment. Therefore, he offers ways to change these negative beliefs and thoughts, and encourages readers to learn to think positively and believe in their own ability to achieve happiness and fulfillment. Murphy wrote this book because he recognized the powerful magic of the subconscious mind, which transcends time and space and different cultures, as the true secret to creating destiny for all of humanity. The book is a practical book that uses many ancient and modern cases as evidence to explore important issues in people's lives such as health, wealth, creativity, interpersonal relationships, and marital happiness, and provides many techniques to regulate the power of the subconscious mind. Before we want to control our subconscious mind, the author believes that we must first understand and clarify its laws, so that we can take the right action when we know exactly what the result will be. It's like trying to do a chemical experiment. 
you are familiar with the table of elements and the principle that two hydrogen atoms plus one oxygen atom can synthesize water. If you do that, you will get certain results. Therefore, when we understand the principle, we can not only set a clear goal, but also know the steps to achieve it. The subconscious mind operates on the principle of the law of belief. What is the law of belief? It is what our mind believes, and that is what it believes, including how to think and how to feel. The mind works on the basis of beliefs. Once it believes something, it executes and shapes all of the external realities it believes in. The events and situations we experience are generated by the subconscious mind based on our own beliefs. It is not the things themselves that cause the results of these realities, but the beliefs themselves in your mind. Now we often hear the phrase that the external world is a projection of the internal world, which also refers to the law of belief, that is, beliefs create our destiny. Murphy believed that the human mind is inherently dualistic and can distinguish between two different parts of its function. He used the terms consciousness and subconscious to denote the duality of the mind, but our consciousness can also be called the objective mind and our subconscious can be called the subjective mind, or the subconscious. Subjective mind, or yin and yang mind, etc. This duality represents the different activities and functions of the mind. The conscious mind performs reasoning functions and is responsible for making choices, on the other hand, functions that are performed automatically without our conscious choice, such as the heartbeat and other vital functions, are maintained by the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is also our objective mind, which uses the five senses to perceive the objective world and to learn through observation, experience, and education, the subconscious mind is the subjective mind which perceives the objective world through intuition and is also the repository of emotions and memories. The subconscious mind is the subjective mind that perceives the objective world intuitively and is the repository of emotions and memories. When the five objective senses are not functioning, the subconscious mind is at its best, just as it is when we are asleep. When awake, as long as the consciousness is in a numb state, such as when we are drowsy or relaxed, the consciousness is in a low activity receptive state, i.e., the subconscious state is higher. According to the author, the subconscious mind contains endless ideas, a golden house that is never satisfied, with a hundred questions and answers, great wisdom and infinite love. It is also a dark room that washes away our external reality. The subconscious mind is like a ship that responds to the captain's thoughts, the consciousness, which is governed by it. When the consciousness gives orders in an authoritative, persuasive manner, the subconscious does not question the content of those orders, nor does it distinguish between good and bad, right and wrong. It only believes what the consciousness believes and accepts and begins to carry it out. Therefore, in order to change your world, you must change your mind from the inside out, reorganize your subconscious mind, and give it a new blueprint. In the book, the author gives an example of sorting out the subconscious mind. A famous tenor got stage fright before a performance, so nervous that his vocal cords became paralyzed and he couldn't make a sound. He calmed down, changed his mind, and said out loud to himself, My little self is trying to kill the big self inside me, get out of the little self, get out. The big me is going to sing. His subconscious mind reacted instantly, and a strong life energy was released from his body, and his vocal cords were no longer paralyzed. He stood on the stage and gave a wonderful performance. The author says that when we have irrational emotions in our hearts, we can firmly give orders and say to ourselves, don't be agitated, calm down, I want to be in charge. You must listen to me and do as I say. Then we use an authoritative posture to sort out our deep inner self, and our mind is instantly stabilized. The techniques described here are geared toward control of physical reactions and emotions, which happen to be in the realm of the subconscious. One of the main points of subconscious control techniques is to avoid conscious resistance. Ever seen a stage hypnosis show? In stage hypnosis shows, it is common to see the hypnotist giving exaggerated instructions to a specific audience member who actually follows the instructions, such as asking the audience member to forget his or her name or to change his or her name, or sometimes to order the person. The body will produce specific responses, 
such as stiffness, hot and cold, and may also change the person into an animal, a celebrity, or even a fairy. The stage hypnotist actually selects the person to be hypnotized conditionally. Basically, those who are selected are those who are tested by the hypnotist on the spot and judged to be able to accept hypnotic suggestion quickly by the subconscious mind. We are most likely to succeed when we are in control of our subconscious mind and when the subconscious mind is receptive to suggestion. When we are drowsy and relaxed, the subconscious mind is in a state of higher tension than the conscious mind. Therefore, for those who are prone to recurring negative thoughts in the conscious mind, it is best to use the heightened state of the subconscious mind to give way to their desired beliefs. In this regard, the authors suggest three methods. One is to repeat the suggestion before going to bed, because the subconscious mind works 24 hours a day, and the suggestion before going to bed can help the subconscious mind to continue to carry out our desired beliefs without interference during sleep. Second, use relaxation techniques to calm your mind and body during waking hours so that your mind is in a state of submission and receptivity to self-cueing. Third, make prayer a daily habit. The author believes that prayer, especially prayer of thanksgiving, can reconcile the duality of thought and lead both to a specific, consistent goal. The intention of prayer is the power of action, and the subconscious is the countervailing force, the faith that will respond to prayer. Gratitude is the mood in which we feel the richness of the universe. This emotionally and physically charged belief is the most intimate way for the subconscious to receive. Therefore, when we convey a suggestion, we can visually imagine as many things and emotions as we want, and send a sincere blessing as if it had really happened, and the subconscious mind will see it as real and continue to perform it. In addition, the author mentions that we basically live in an environment full of other people's cues. Our lives and thoughts are inevitably influenced by cultural practices, religious beliefs, political dogma, etc. These cues play a dominant role as implicit norms. We have been receiving cues from others since we were young, especially when our minds were not so mature and it was difficult to choose what we wanted and what we did not want. But as our minds grow, we can choose again. We can use what we want to adjust and replace the brand of faith left on us in the past. The first step to doing this is to become acutely aware of the workings of your beliefs and whether there are any negative beliefs that are holding you back, making you powerless, fearful, worried or anxious, making you not believe you can be happy, rich, healthy, successful, etc. We can observe recurring or persistent dilemmas in our lives to see if we have corresponding habits or beliefs, such as wanting to get up early for exercise during holidays, but always choosing to stay in bed when the alarm goes off, believing we are weak in willpower. We all know that in order to change old habits, we need to develop new habits. Many people find it difficult to change their habits. This statement is actually a belief. If we want to reverse this bad habit, we can use subconscious cues to make the new habit appear more quickly in a harmonious and relaxed way. For example, before going to bed to repeatedly remind themselves when to automatically wake up, the body is fully rested and refreshed, naturally want to get up and exercise, but also in bed to consciously relax themselves this day, imagine and feel themselves, so that they are immersed in the energy and satisfaction of exercise. These are all ways to harness the power of the subconscious mind to align our bodies and emotions with our goals and consciousness. We can decide what to believe, what to empower, and what to manifest. We can shape what we want to be and allow the subconscious mind to shape itself based on positive suggestions. The law of the mind is the law of belief, and what the mind believes is what it creates, so that a person's beliefs will eventually manifest in their reality. To apply the law of intention, we must understand that our intention is both conscious and subconscious. The conscious mind can control and select good, beneficial beliefs, so that the subconscious mind accepts the beliefs and immediately implements the content of the beliefs, further creating the corresponding reality. Through the construction of beliefs and subconscious cues, we can reconstruct ourselves and our destiny. There is a very good line in the book that says, Change your thoughts, and you change your destiny. Overall, 
The Power of the Subconscious is a valuable self-help book that offers many practical ways and techniques to use the power of the subconscious mind to improve your life. If you are interested in self-growth, self-discovery, and spiritual growth, then this is a book worth reading.